This is, a, this is from a post by Alan Ford on the Education Forum. And he's got a, a frame here from the Wagman film, which shows doorway man whom most people say is Billy Lovelady. And he is concerned here with the shadow on doorway man's right side. He seems to think that it hides somebody there, possibly Lee Harvey Oswald. So he thinks the shadow is an alteration. And to support that idea, he provides a video, which he has made from the Weigman film, which involves this antenna, this aerial on a car in front of Weigman, as it passes uh, in front of Doorway Man and through the shadow to Doorway Man's right. So starting with this frame, you can see the antenna there. To uh, Right there passes through the shadow to Doorway Man's right. And again here, it passes through the shadow. Now here, stopping it on the frame where it's most obscured from the shadow, you can see that it's more obscured in the shadow area, and you can actually see, apparently, what is the shadow area, as if it is uh, had been, as if it has been added to the photography. So that looks pretty good. Now somebody else, I forget who, added this graphic to the thread, where he plays around with the uh, brightness of the image, and his point is that he thinks by uh, making it brighter there in the shadow area, you can see that the shirt being worn by Doorway Man is the same shirt being worn by the person on the left there. I think he's wrong about that. But what I like about his graphic is it shows no hint whatsoever of anybody being to the right, to Doorway Man's right. Not only that, but it shows no hint of there being anybody, anything hidden there either. So, I like this graphic because it seems to reveal that nobody is being hidden beside Doorway Man. But I do think the shadow on Doorway Man's right edge is an alteration. I don't think the shadow being cast by the pillar or the wall should reach that far to Doorway Man. I think it was added, and uh, as, a, as a proof of that, I have this... Uh, frame from a film taken after the shooting, not too long after the shooting, but a few minutes, I think, and there's a police officer there, I have the red dot on him, and he's standing about in the same spot as a Doorway Man, and there's no shadow on him, and not only that, there's a person, I believe a woman, off to his left, and even further closer to the door, where the shadow you would expect to uh, be closer to her, and even she does not have the shadow on her. Now, it might be slightly on her left side. You know, it looks like maybe the shoulder has a little shadow on it. But I think it's clear the doorway man is standing uh, in a position that would be further out of the shadow than she is. I think he's standing where that police officer is here. And there's no shadow on the police officer. And this is after the shooting, and the sun, of course, is moving to the west. So this shadow should only be getting longer and reaching further to our right in this photo. So I think that proves that the Weigman shadow is an alteration. And similarly with this photo, taken after the shooting, of course, I think uh, that shadow should be on that policeman if it's real in the Weigman film. But he is completely out of shadow. So I think we have a genuine alteration in the Weidman film, a shadow being added on the uh, right side of Doorway Man, but that it's not hiding anybody. It's a shadow on Doorway Man. And there's lots of alterations going on using shadows in this doorway. Here in the Towner film, we can see that a shadow has been uh, applied very liberally coming down from the top of the doorway cutting off the heads of everybody in the doorway, except for Carl Jones, I think his head is, a, is visible on the left, because he's the lowest of those heads. But everybody else's head is a complete shadow that cannot be penetrated 
with any digital uh, alteration, with any digital effects. And this is the Weaver photo, a Polaroid photo, that, so far as I know, exists only in two FBI versions and nowhere else, this being one. And if we enlarge the area of the doorway, we can see that one figure has had his head completely blacked out. I'm not sure who that is. I'm not sure you would even be able to see it in the original photo very well. But it looks obvious to me that somebody went through the trouble, somebody at the FBI, presumably, of blacking out that person's head. And this is the other version of the Weaver photo, which just shows the building and not the limousine. And it, it shows much more detail than the first one I showed. And when I compare this one to the Alcan 6 photo doorway, it looks to me as if they're blacking out the head of Doorway Man. I'm not certain of that because, you know, in one photo it looks like he's on one side because of camera angles, and in this photo it looks like he's close to the middle, even further over to the opposite side. But if you see him in relation to the guy with his hands on his head, then it looks like they, it, it might be Doorway Man whose head is being blacked out. So in both the Towner and the Weaver photo, we have alterations which are obscuring faces in the doorway. And even in the Alkins photo, the guy on the right, faceless man, doesn't have a face, does he? Some people will argue that his face can't be seen because his hands are shadowing it. I don't think that's a valid argument. I think his face has been intentionally hidden. I don't think his hands would cast a shadow completely down his face like that. How, as I've already said, I think Billy Lovelady's face was pasted onto Doorway Man. You can see Lovelady on the insert, and on the, the left is Doorway Man with Lovelady's face. And in this graphic, I've illustrated that idea. On the left is the original, and on the right, I have uh, highlighted, in a way, the part of the face which I think has been pasted on here. That is what's outside of my highlighting, I think, was in the original photograph. That is that the top of Doorway Man's face is Lovelady's face, and the bottom of Doorway Man's face is the original Doorway Man, and that the reason he has no left lower face in the resulting project product is because in the original photograph, Doorway Man was turned to his left so his lower right face was turned away from the camera, so you can't see it in the photo. And for some reason, the photo editor apparently only had the top part of Lovelady's face and did not have the lower left part. And so when he put it on here, the resulting image has no lower left face. And I think that Doorway Man is actually Joe Molina, who is this person on the left, taken from a Murray photo. And uh, I think this remnants of his jacket visible in the Doorway Man image in the Alcon 6 photo, but that alterations were made to the jacket so that that could be mistaken for a shirt. And I think the explanation for Faceless Man is that the original plan had been to put Billy Lovelady's face there, and that this person... Uh, his face is blacked out because they don't want us to know who's standing there. But the, if you look at the shirts, uh, the, the insert is the shirt that, F, that uh, Billy Lovelady wore on the day that he visited the FBI. And he told the FBI that this was the shirt he was wearing on the day of the assassination. So I think the plan was that even though Billy Lovelady was not wearing this shirt on the day of the assassination, somebody else was or was wearing a very similar shirt and that his face was going to be pasted on onto that somebody else so that it could be said that that's Billy Lovelady wearing the same shirt he shows up for the FBI interview wearing. But for some reason they couldn't paste the face on that guy. They had to paste it, paste it on Joe Molina instead and that's what results in all the weirdness here. 
because it didn't go as planned here. The plan was to give Billy Lovelady an alibi by having him photographed on the steps at the time of the assassination when actually he was up in the sixth floor window pretending to be Oswald. And that's why Doorway Man is wearing three quarters of Billy Lovelady's face and Faceless Man is faceless. And this is the Murray photo from which I obtained the image of Joe Molina. And Joe Molina is wearing a business jacket, and he's standing next to somebody wearing a shirt, very conveniently. And if you compare the shoulders and the sides of the jacket to the shirt, the jacket looks like a jacket and the shirt looks like a shirt. They don't look the same. And that's what's going on in the Weigman film with the side of Doorway Man's jacket. They're not hiding somebody beside or behind Doorway Man. They're hiding the side of his jacket so that you won't see that it's a jacket, so that you can think it's a shirt. And this is also hidden in the Alkin 6 photo. You can't see the shoulders of the Alkin 6 guy. You should be able to see his left shoulder, but you can't. And uh, that's because they don't want you to know it's a, it's a jacket. They want you to think it's a shirt. And the shadow under Doorway Man's head is made bigger so that it hides the fact that Doorway Man is wearing the dress shirt. So they want you to think Doorway Man is Love Lady, and they want you to think that Love Lady left the steps, and that this is uh, he and Shelley walking away in the uh, couch film. But as I have explained in other videos, I think that's actually Danny Arche and Jack Doherty walking in the couch film. So Doorway Man did not really leave the steps. So since Doorway Man is not walking away from the steps in the couch film, we should be able to see him here in the Darnell film when it swings over to the doorway. But apparently we can't see him there. Here I've got the Darnell film frame on the left and a Wagman film frame on the right and circled in red on the right in the Wagman is Doorway Man and around him I've put different colored dots on people so that you can see where he should be on the left in the Darnell frame that comes after the Wagman and uh, where he should be I've got circled in red there and I've also put in this red color here uh, just to illustrate what is there now that wasn't there before. So we've got a situation here where I think Doorway Man still is there probably. It's not that long later here. Many of the same people are still here. But he's either covered up by people who are genuinely there or perhaps some of those people have been pasted in in order to cover him up. And as I said, I think Doorway Man is Joe Molina, and Joe Molina did tell the Warren Commission that he was still standing on the steps when Roy truly went in the building. Uh, he didn't see the police officer, but I'm not going to get off explaining that here. So he was still standing there when truly went into the building, so he should still be there in this frame uh, from the Darnell film. Molina also told the Warren Commission that he talked to Otis Williams after the shooting and that Williams was standing to his left and the brown dot man there is Otis Williams. And we got this white out spot here where Otis Williams uh, should be. So it could be that Molina is uh, talking to Joe, uh, to Otis Williams here and that uh, therefore it had to be whited out so we wouldn't see Molina still there because Doorway Man isn't supposed to be there anymore because that's where Doorway Man was and we can't see Doorway Man there because we're supposed to think he's Billy Lovelady and we're supposed to think Shelley and Lovelady are walking away in the couch film. That's what this is all about. It's all about hiding the fact that Love Lady was not on the steps. He was on the sixth floor. And uh, Doorway Man is Joe Molina. So this alteration that Alan Ford sees really is there, but it's not hiding Lee Harvey Oswald poking in and out behind uh, Joe Molina. 
or Doorway Man or, or Billy Lovely, whoever you want to think it is, it's not hiding Oswald. It's hiding the fact that Doorway Man is Joe Molina. <laughs> 